Good morning everyone. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Mayong buntag ka na itong tanan, mga kaiksunan. Today is the first Sunday after Pentecost. And today is also celebrated by the majority of Christianity around the globe as Trinity Sunday. Siguro po may magtanong sa inyo. Ano ba yung Trinity Ano ba yung kahalagahan ng Trinity sa buhay natin? Ba't kailangan pa itong celebrate o kailangan pang malaman? Magandang tanong po yan mga kapatid dahil ang isang bagay ay binigyang halaga lamang pag ito ay may kabuluhan sa buhay natin. Unless it become personal, it will be of little or no value at all. Let's take, for example, a paddle, yung tinatawag natin gaud o bugsay ng mga sibuano. For a non-fisherman like me, a paddle as a gift is not something that would excite me. Ano ba yung gawin ko doon pang talo? But what about if I were a fisherman? Knowing that my life and my livelihood is at stake on a paddle then it becomes a different story. That extraordinary gift becomes an extraordinary. But what about the Holy Trinity, God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? What is the relevance of Trinity in our lives? Unless we know who God is and who we are in Him, the triune God will not matter much in our life. But knowing Him personally as He is and who we are in Him, that He is a loving, a forgiving, a trustworthy God, and that we are loved, forgiven, and accepted by Him, will surely make a great difference. Speaking about the Trinity, God as revealed in Christ, is a fellowship of self-giving love. In this fellowship, the three are continually sharing in each other's delight and desires, in each other's loves and longings, in each other's pleasures and pursuits. They are dynamically one in the sharing of life and love, which C.S. Lewis called the great dance. Trinity is about relationship, fellowship, a holy communion where each one is communing or indwelling with each other. It is about a community of love shared by the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is not about each person seeking its own way, but each one is living in perfect harmony with each other. A good analogy but still for, for sure to describe the Trinity is a symphony orchestra where its piece contributes to create a beautiful and perfect melody. No one is out of tune. The good news is that through Jesus, we are invited to participate in the activity of the triune God. He's calling us out from darkness into light, from a life of guilt and shame to a life that is free to live out the life that he intended us to flourish. Shame has a negative effects on our relationship with God and on each other. There is a shame test that we can take online which enables us to self-diagnose whether or not we struggle with shame. Here are some of the questions. If you answer yes or sometimes, then evidently you have had encounter with shame. And here are some of the questions. It is relatively easy for me to criticize members of my family, people at work or school or myself. I have a hard time believing that someone can fully love and accept me. I don't accept 
complements well. When I'm lost, I find it difficult to ask for directions or help. When things go wrong, I have a hard time accepting blame. I find it hard to rest or relax without feeling guilty. And another one, I feel embarrassed or humiliated by certain things from my past. Basically, based on how we answer these questions, all of us struggle with shame. Before we continue, let's define shame. The author and researcher Bryn Brown says, I define shame as the intensely painful feeling or experience of believing that we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging. Something we experience, done, or fail to do makes us unworthy of connection. And Brown goes on to say that shame is often the source of hurtful behavior and that it can make us dangerous. Most of us have faced shame and feel unworthy of love and belonging at some point in our lives. And add to that, for Christians, shame can come when we don't fully grasp how deeply loved and forgiven we are, or that the most appropriate response to our inclusion in the relationship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is to love and share our gifts with one another. In other words, shame can come when we fail to embrace our true identity and then we begin to compare ourselves to others or even to Christ. The irony is when we feel shame, we can still feel shame when we feel blessed. Because our enemies likes to see us in the darkness of shame rather than in the light of our true identity. The issue of shame is not new. We can learn a lot about how we let go of our darkness of shame and move into the light of who we are in Jesus Christ by considering the example of Nicodemus in John 3. Let's take a look. John 3 verse 1, 17. Nicodemus visits Jesus. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jew. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where, where it grows. So it is with everyone, everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Verily, truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the, up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up 
that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that anyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. What can we observe about the text? In John 3, offers the chance for Jesus to talk about all the three persons of the Trinity. In verses 5 to 8, talks about the Holy Spirit and the need for us to yield to His leading. Verses 13 to 15 discuss Jesus as the Son and predict the cross. And verses 16 to 17 Go back to the foundation of the Father's great love for all humanity and the lengths that He would go to break the bands of shame so all might know their worth in that sight. Now let's focus on Nicodemus. In verse 1 to 2, Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. The Gospel of John has a recurring theme of darkness versus light. Notice that Nicodemus came to meet Jesus at night. Though we can only speculate, we can assume that he was moving from believing that Jesus was sent by God, from unbelief or darkness to belief or light. Notice his words. No one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Allow me to discuss with you today our verses about the Holy Trinity in this order. Father, Son, and Spirit. Not because of hierarchical order, since, since each one considered the others highly above self, but because it all began in the Father's love for all humanity. That is why He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, that we can have abundant life as we yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let us start in verse 16 to 18 about God the Father. For God so loved the world that He gave His Son so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Verse 16 is one of the best love verses. Yet, it doesn't complete. It is not complete without verse 17. Jesus came so that he, we could be included in the relationship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Verse 17 tells us that God didn't send Jesus to condemn or shame the world, but to break the feelings of shame and separation that makes us feel off, far off from God. Though we all struggle with shame as we grow in our understanding and belief in God's great love for us, we can let go of the feelings of unworthiness and embrace ourselves, imperfections and all, as beloved children of God. In verse 13 to 15, talk about Jesus as the Son of Man. No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. Jesus makes a reference to His crucifixion 
by take by talking about Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. This goes back to Numbers 21 verse 9 when the Israelites were traveling to the promised promised land and they were sinning by speaking against the Lord. Many were beaten by poisonous snakes. The way they were healed was to look upon a bronze snake statue put on a pole. Jesus compares the healing of the snake bites to the healing of our feeling of shame and separation from God. We look to Jesus for restoration and peace. In verse 3 to 4, speaks about the Holy Spirit. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus takes advantage of the dual meaning of the Greek word translated from above, which can also be translated again. He lets Nicodemus' confusions grow and he doesn't resolve the tension or misunderstanding. Sometimes God lets us sit in our lack of understanding, knowing that we continue to resell the truth. It will change us. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Jesus explains the Holy Spirit. Specifically, he can contrast our fleshly human responses, which is often shame-based, and thus confirming with the Spirit's freedom moving where it chooses. That's the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. So what are some of our takeaway from these verses that we can apply in our daily lives? Number one, recognize that shame affects us all. And it can keep us from sharing our gifts and God's love with others. Researcher Bryn Brown says that speaking about shame helps to decrease its power. And when we focus on the high value God has placed on each individual, we can see we are all growing in grace and in knowledge. Comparisons among ourselves are harmful and only lead to judgment and shame. God has freed us from shame's hold. Number two, remember the Nicodemus story. Moving from darkness to light, from shame to freedom to love, doesn't happen all at once. After this passage in John 3, we don't hear any more about Nicodemus throughout the remainders of Jesus' ministry. So we might assume he just ran off into the night, but Jesus had given him a lot to think about. And while we don't know exactly what happened, we can see by Nicodemus' actions that he did believe Jesus enough to honor him with Joseph of Arimathea by bringing a large number of spices to bury Jesus' body. We can read that in John 19, verse 38 to 42. As a Pharisee, Nicodemus took a quite a risk by doing this, given the culture of his day, so he might, we might say this evidence as he moved from disbelief, shame, and cultural constraints to the life of love and freedom in Christ. Number three, 
Remember yourself of your true identity. Consider talking this approach when any shaming or negative thoughts come upon. Respond by replacing the shaming or negative thoughts with biblical affirmation. For example, if you have recurring thoughts of past failure, think on 2 Corinthians verse 15, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. Though shame is a struggle for all of us, the story of Nicodemus shows how we can move towards a greater understanding of God's love for us and inherent value and worthiness he has placed on us as beloved children by embracing the freedom we have to be imperfect yet loving human beings we give others with permission to do the same now let us prepare for our communion the bread and wine reminds us of our inclusion in the triune God. That through Christ, God is communing with us in the Spirit. That we are freed from shame, from darkness into light. That we are no longer called enemies, but friends of Jesus, sons and daughters of the living God. It is also a reminder for us of our spiritual participation in our adoption into the heavenly communion into the Trinitarian life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this bread and cup representing our spiritual participation in the body and blood of Christ. United with us in our Humanity. He has in undying love and grace taken us into the life He shared with us, with you, the Holy Spirit. Help us to know and believe in the communion that we have with you and with one another. We pray all things through the intercession of the Son and the Spirit, giving honor to you, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit forever. Let us take our bread. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us eat. Let's have our cup. The blood of Christ, the cup of our salvation. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters, for participating with us, and we hope to see you next week. God bless us all.